Good morning, Sofa Squad. How's it going out there? Things are pretty good here at the campground. I really can't complain. However, I have been on a deep dive mission of Jeffrey Epstein. And y'all already know the internet is melting down down over this case y'all so here at the sofa squad we have started to dive into this and this is the case that will never stop giving I, I swear i mean this will never end we are watching a historic moment and the world of conspiracy crime all sorts of things so without further ado let's review Now, at this point, we all know that Epstein was found Saturday morning in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center. That's, you know, we know that much. So from there on out, it gets kind of strained. So he was in a unit known for holding notorious prisoners under like really tight security. However, that part is now up for debate. Now, the jail policy called for Epstein to be checked on like every 30 minutes or so, uh, but that was not done several hours before he was discovered. Now, Epstein was in the facility's special housing unit and was on suicide watch when weeks ago uh, the apparent self-inflicted marks on his neck showed up. Now, the suicide watch ended before his death on Saturday, and like I said, the internet is melting down with questions, you know, shock as to why and how this was allowed to happen. Now, one thing that is going on is there are all these reports about understaffing conditions at the MCC. Uh, sources are saying that two guards at the unit where Epstein was housed were both on overtime at the time of his death. And it was also reported that one of the two people looking after him at night uh, wasn't even a correctional officer. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that, y'all. I mean, I'm just like, are you... You can't make this stuff up. Uh, now, with staff shortages, there's the federal prisons are having to resort to having, like, the support staff, like, clerks and teachers fill in for correctional workers. I'm just like, okay, so real quick, let's pause. Here's my thing. Okay, if you're, you know, shortage, first of all, do they have the proper training? You know, there's tons of questions that go with that, but set those aside. Let's just specifically focus on questions related to this case. So you're short, you're you're in a bind, whatever, you've got to do what you got to do to keep things staffed. Is there nothing possible short of the warden filling in because of the high profoundness of this case to say, we have to sit here and make sure this is covered? You know, I, I, unfortunately, no one else can cover it, whatever. You know, I'll come in there to, you know, cover my butt on this. Because at this point, it looks really bad. You know, because obviously there's the, you know, was he murdered? Was he this? So let's take all that aside and say it was legitimately this prison just was not equipped to house him. I mean, y'all, that is so bad on so many levels. So, and all this is coming to light now, and it's just, it's, everybody's shocked and outraged. Okay, now, allegedly, he used a bed sheet to create, like, a makeshift noose and to hang himself, and he was found with a sheet wrapped around his neck and secured to the top of the bunk, and basically, it looks like he kneeled forward towards the floor and used the noose to strangle himself. So, that in and of itself, I, I mean, it seems difficult to do, but, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully, we'll get some more information about that aspect uh, as the case continues. Now, one of Epstein's former cellmates was Nicholas Tartagelloni. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, now, he had been a Briarcliff Manor cop in Westchester County, New York, and in 2016, he was charged with the death of four men stemming from, like, basically a cocaine drug conspiracy. Uh, now, he was this huge, muscled-up dude, and he, it was said that, you know, there's been some things floating around that he was afraid of this guy. Uh, now, obviously, this officer was probably in protective custody for, you know, specific reasons, too. Um, but... To me, listening to that aspect, I'm just kind of like, hmm. Yeah, because this guy would probably know a lot of type stuff that happens to people like Epstein. Like, if you want to go with the whole thing of, like, somebody being in his ear, being like, this is the best thing for you to do, and da 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 Now, Nicholas was questioned after Epstein's suicide attempt last month, and he reportedly told officials he didn't see anything related to the apparent suicide attempt. He maintained that he didn't touch Epstein, and Nicholas's lawyer said that the rumors about uh, Nicholas, and I'm 
I'm saying his first name Nicholas, so I don't keep butchering his last name. Uh, but he's saying these rumors atta about him attacking Epstein are totally not true. And essentially what he's saying is that any suggestion that Nicholas assaulted anyone is a total fabrication. And that the story is being leaked to retaliate against Nicholas for complaining to the court about the deplorable conditions at the jail. Apparently the conditions at this jail are just like horrendous. And so I guess Nicholas has been, you know making a fuss about this or whatever, making complaints, making some noise. He probably has a little bit better idea about how to go about that, having worked as a police officer and things of that nature. Now, Attorney General William Barr spoke at a police conference in New Orleans, and he said, and I will quote, I was appalled, and indeed, the whole department was, and frankly, angered to learn of the MCC's failure to adequately secure this prisoner. We are now learning of serious ir irregularities at this facility that are deeply concerning and demand a thorough investigation. The FBI and the Office of Inspector General are doing just that. We will get to the bottom of what happened and there will be accountability. Now, Barr also said that anyone who may have conspired with Epstein should not rest easy. And, I mean, so, okay, so let's review real quick here. So the day before he killed himself, like 2,000 pages were released, pointing fingers at some very big names. Now, Maxwell, his, like, gal pal, girlfriend-ish, uh, you know, best friend, uh, you know, young girl procure, all this type stuff... She, in my opinion, needs to be looking over her shoulder. Because to me, I'm like, they are coming... Even if he was alive, they needed to come after her. But if they weren't coming after her already, they should be coming after her now. Because she's really, in my opinion, and there's a lot of other people, but she's such a public figure and was so closely associated with him. She's going to have... And was committing the crimes with him. So... You know, she's going to have a lot of information that needs to come to the surface for the victims. Now, the New York City Medical Examiner announced Sunday night that she had finished the autopsy on Jeffrey, and the cause of his death is pending for their investigation. Now, apparently, this is a determination that isn't all that uncommon, so we'll kind of see what comes of that. Uh, now, also, Epstein's representatives hired a celebrity pathologist, uh, Michael Baden, to conduct an independent autopsy and to oversee the autopsy that was taking place. Now, this is the same guy that did, like, Michael Brown's autopsy, uh, Aaron Hernandez. So it'll be interesting to see what they come out with as well. Now, I was reading another article on this, and I'm actually going to probably do a little bit more of an in-depth video on, like, who who was Je Jeffrey Epstein, that type thing. But I just wanted to kind of say this real quick. So this is a New York Times reporter, James Stewart, and they had interviewed Epstein, like, a year before his arrest. And, like, went to his place in, uh, in Manhattan and the whole nine yards. And, you know, first of all, he said he was greeted by this blonde, very young lady at the door. He thought that was kind of odd. You know, with the person with, like, kind of these allegations following them. Like, why would you have a young lady like this who's a little young looking answer the front door? And, you know, basically he said that, you know, Epstein was unapologetic and defiant to the end in his beliefs on men sleeping with girls. And he basically cited Epstein as saying that, you know, the criminalization of sex with teenage girls was a cultural aberration. And that at times in history it was perfectly acceptable. So, you know, it's kind of a little shocking because you're reading this and it's just like, you know, he kind of, want, he definitely, I mean, he was found guilty of this. This is like, no secret you know he knew what he had done you know and i'm sure he was coming to the realization of i'm going away for a long time this is a billionaire with lots of privilege that abuse that privilege as well as lots of other people and he didn't really see anything wrong with what he was doing that's what makes it even more wrong you know not only is he exploiting these people and manipulating them and doing all sorts of things and you know and assaulting them but he doesn't see anything wrong with it and he's justifying it like oh well back in history well there's a lot of things that happen back in history that we don't want to repeat so you know it kind of is what it is but like I said I'm going to do a different video so that it's not all lumped in with these updates and stuff um, and so that's kind of it. We're going to obviously be following this case. I mean, y'all, this is just, it, it still blows my mind that this has happened. So, you know, I think that right now there are heads rolling up there. I mean, my goodness, y'all. If this literally just comes down to there's no kind of conspiracy or whatever, it was just literally mishandled. I mean, y'all, it is a bad look for the MCC. So that is it right now. Y'all, we have a new website, reporting live from my sofa.com. Bam, I'm going to put the link down there. Or you probably have to, it'll be a little thing that probably goes across the screen right here. But um, be sure to check it out. I'm trying to lump all of the Sofa Squad stuff there. So the podcast, 
uh, social media, YouTube videos, updates, mailing list, you name it, it's going to be there. So it's just, you know, a different place to go join in the community if you like. If you want links and more of the Sofa Squad, it's in there. Go check it out downstairs in the description for the official link. And thank you for choosing to hang out with me. I hope you have a wonderful day. It is going to be a scorcher, so drink lots of water and stay cool. And guess what? I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Au revoir. See you later.